So today, um, I'm going to be working on the aft inboard tank rib sub-assembly. That's this piece right here. This is a wet piece, and what that means is um, the inside of this is going to be where the fuel is. So you have to make sure you get all the pieces and parts put on here, and then this is going to be the first guy that we use the goop on. Um, it's a really beautiful day out, but it is really windy, so I may end up closing my hanger. So the first thing I need to do is I need to take this piece, which goes right here, and prep it. I haven't even taken the bluing off of this yet. Some of these pieces, as you see like this, they just come stamped, and they're really rough. Like, you wouldn't want to use it in this state. I I've got to go over to the uh, deburring machine over there and really work this sucker over. But this goes right here, and then you've got... Uh, these these ports that go here like so. So then the idea is this goes in here to keep it from turning. Uh, you'll note though <laughs> it doesn't fit right now. So that's the other part with this piece is you have to make it so that this piece will just slip inside there. And right now it doesn't even come close. So that's what I'm going to be working on. So real quick, I want to talk to step six of 18-5. This is basically where they instruct you to uh, fabricate a couple little pieces of metal to go over the holes that are the positioning holes for some of the outboard most parts for the fuel tank. Uh, these positioning holes are used when they do the stamping of the part so that they make sure the part doesn't move, uh, but unfortunately it's a hole, right? And we have to fill those holes. Now the rest of the holes in the skins and the ribs and whatnot are filled by rivets. And you put the uh, Pro Seal stuff over that before you do the riveting and you seal the hell out of it and you're good to go. But with these particular positioning holes, there's nothing that goes in them. So they recommend fabricating just a piece of metal to go over that and you just Pro Seal around it. My old part, what I had done on the previous tank, was to use a, a bolt. Basically, I, I screwed a bolt in, had, had a, put some Loctite on there, and just cranked it down. You know, one bolt, one piece of metal, Pro Seal all over the top of it, should be good to go. This time, I did this. Instead of using a bolt, I used a pop rivet. Um, again, same thing. I put some Pro Seal around the outside. I put the pop rivet in, and then I'm going to pop. I, I'm going to Pro Seal all over the top of it once that lower bit of Pro Seal dries a little bit. I, I cannot stress this enough. If you have the money, get the quick build wings. This Pro Seal shit is awful. I fucking hate it. Please forgive my language. This is probably the first time you've heard me curse in this entire ordeal. I hate it. It is awful to work with. It is not fun. It is sticky. It stinks. It's a pain in the ass to work with. You get it everywhere. So just get the quick build if you can. Okay, I've buffed out the sides here. This is nice and smooth all the way around. The inside's a little sharp still. And so I'm going to use this guy to just kind of scrape a little around the inside here. Uh, if you have files or other other things that works too but this is quick and then it'll be about trying to fit make it so that this will fit and that's going to take a little more effort so good times and it'll take a lot more where is my file anyway hmm all right, let's see if I can figure out how to widen that hole. I don't remember how I did it on the last part. <laughs> I might have just kept scraping it with this until it, until it fit. That might honestly be the easiest way. Each time you take off a little sheen of aluminum, so... All right, more work. One of the problems I had previously was actually getting some of this, uh, this stuff delivered. You know, they come in really giant crates and you have to have a way to offload them off the trucks. Now, thankfully, uh, the very first time the guy didn't have one of those lifts on the truck, so he and I were able to manhandle the stuff off. It sucked, but we were able to do it. The second time he came out here, he remembered me and he brought a truck that had a lift gate and he had one of those pump up uh, a jack so that we could get the thing onto the lift gate and then maneuver it where we needed to. This fuselage crate is much, much bigger and weighs a lot more. It's, it's eight feet 
by four feet by three and a half feet. It's basically the size of this table and, you know, yay high. That's going to be a problem. It weighs 550 pounds. My father and I are not going to be able to move that around. And I certainly wasn't going to be able to do it up at my house. So I had them deliver it to my father's house and I got that. That trailer is exactly what I needed. I was able to get it for a pretty good deal and I'm, I'm actually supremely happy with it. It was on sale, it's 600 bucks. I've been wanting to get one anyways. I need it for other things, motorcycle hauling and just general other stuff. So that trailer is gonna be perfect. It's something to think about. If you can't have this stuff delivered directly to your house, you're gonna have to have a way to, to get this stuff. These boxes are big and the truck drivers, they got a whole schedule of different deliveries they have to make. They don't have all day to help you. So uh, something to keep in mind. So probably for the rest of this video, I'm gonna be doing a lot of quick moving. Um, I've talked about this before, working with the Pro Seal or what I commonly and uh, lovingly refer to as the Goop. Uh, you don't have a lot of time. Now they make different versions of the Pro Seal. Some of it hardens in 30 minutes, some of it hardens in two hours, whatever. I'm not sure what those times are. Um, but there is a level uh, how quickly uh, so you can actually get how quickly it sets. So you can get some that are slower to set and some that are quicker to set. Be cognizant of that when you buy it. Um, I'm not sure what the actual set time is for the stuff on the Vans website. Uh, you'll have to look. But to that end, I'm going to be mixing up some of that and I'm going to be going real fast. So uh, I'm not going to have time to show some of this stuff. So I'll have to do it as an overlay. Um, one thing I do want to talk about briefly, though, uh, with regards to this, again, I'm talking about this particular uh, tank assembly, tank sub-assembly. This is the inboard part. This is where your fuel sender is. Um, on the end here is where this fuel sender uh, actually attaches. There's five holes here, and those holes are supported by nut plates underneath. Uh, this, this, this particular fuel sender can only go on here one way. Now, they have the, uh, a capacitive fuel sender. I'm not really sure how that works. It's a plate that sits on the inside. I've, I've, I've linked to that before. Uh, this particular one is the float sender, which I've got pictures of how I made that and how I got that working. Very clever, very simple. Um, it only goes on here one way, so so that's that's awesome because otherwise you could get it really screwed up but because of the nature of this guy uh, it has nut plates underneath here and so these nut plates have to either be countersunk or dimpled now I've talked about this before there are places in the plans where they don't really discuss that real well they don't really talk about it and this goes back to the whole we're not gonna hold your hand thing the discussion I've had with fans before of all the plans, of all every page in, in both the empennage and the wings, this is the one page that I think they need to rewrite. Just because it's a little attention to detail, they've just missed some stuff. And that might be because they don't address how you attach this real well, simply because your fuel sender is going to be different, or how it attaches, I assume, is different based on which fuel sender you have. Uh, like I said, I have the float fuel sender, which has a different set of instructions. Um, it comes w in the box for the sender, but even in these instructions, it doesn't really talk about uh, how to prepare this, not real well. So they, they basically say you got to attach nut plates on the bottom here, but what they don't say is whether or not you need to countersink or whether or not you need to dimple. Now, in this other part that is at the other side of the table, um, there are nut plates that you you dimple. You dimple both under the, the nut plate and you dimple the, uh, the nut plate flanges themselves on either side for when you attach it. That's what I'm going to elect to do here. I'm going to dimple these. In the other one, I actually countersunk them. and this is not super thick, so how thick the metal is determines whether or not you want to countersink or whether or not you want to dimple. Um, I countersunk that one. It looked okay, and I think once I put all the, the goop and all the other stuff and I mounted everything and sealed it, I think it's fine. But this one, just because of the, the, the nature of this metal and it's not as thick, I decided to go ahead and dimple this one. So that's what I'm going to be doing next, as well as rushing through and finishing up this part. Uh, I've got several things to do. I'm going to try to get it all done today. 
So while I continue to work in the background, um, I found some stuff on Van's website I wanted to talk to real quick, uh, specifically around the goop. Now you have heard me time and time again talk about how this stuff is awful. I just cursed at you a little bit ago, sorry, about how bad it is because I was having a frustrating day and I got it all over myself. I'll be taking my, uh, my shirt off here in a bit to, to actually work on this stuff. Don't worry, I have a white undershirt on, on underneath. You don't need to see that. Um, but I found they've got these little kits uh, this is a, like a little touch-up kit, and then this one is like a plunger system that uses a caulk gun style device for delivery. If this is even a tenth as good as I think it's going to be, this is how I'm going to go from now on. Up to now, I've been buying the stuff in bulk, just in quart containers and doing the mixing myself, and then trying to apply it using popsicle sticks and toothpicks and spatulas and all the other stuff, and it is awful. Whereas this seems like it should be much, much better. Um, if for no other reason than just easier to apply, there's down here, there's a nozzle, so you can actually be very specific as to where you apply it. And then of course, um, you know, measuring and all that stuff is done for you. You just, you, you push this down and, and twist and push and twist and push and, you know, you have a ramrod and you mix it internally. It's actually pretty clever. And then this one is is a one size fits all or one use rather, uh, a kind of a deal where, oh, I need to make a quick adjustment. Uh, or a quick fix, and so you have this. Now, the one thing I did note is that they have different codes on here. So uh, this sealant is the CS32, I don't know if you can read that, 3204, whereas this one is an AC240. Uh, both of them, this has the B2 and this is B1 slash uh, two. The B code, as I understand it, has to do with how fast it cures. I think the half cures a lot faster than the two. Don't quote me on that. I'll look it up and comment down below. Um, but my concern was that the CS3204 is not the same as the AC240. Um, and I looked on their websites and it is the same stuff. I don't know why it has a different code. Like it's, it's, it's both meant to be used as a fuel resistant, you know, uh, uh, a vulcanizing rubber epoxy stuff. So it's the same stuff, just different codes. Anyways, I'm gonna continue working on it in the background. I'm gonna give this stuff a shot and hopefully, hopefully it kicks ass because honestly, oh, yuck. <laughs> So this is probably a point when a lot of you are wondering, what the heck is he doing? Basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to limit the mess I make when I apply the dreaded goop. Um, I have the inside of the tank. So I'm working on the inside of the tank and, and all across the inside on one side, there are baffles to keep the fuel, to fuel from sloshing around. It's a basic idea. And those baffles, I mean, every single baffle has like 10 rivets in it and those are holes in the tank. So we have to use the goop to seal those holes. Well, by running long strips of blue painter's tape on either side of those baffles, I can then apply the uh, sealant underneath the baffle, rivet it down using the back rivet plate and, and uh, that little carpet that you see where I have the cutout. Um, use that, put it in place, and then once I'm done, peel all that blue up, that blue painter's tape up before it uh, starts drying, sort of cleaning up my mess. That's really what it's about. Um, you'll also see me scratch the inside of the tank along where those baffles sit. Again, just to give something to seal, that, that, that sealant to hold on to. I did it with the other tank. It seems to work out pretty well, and so I'm going to do it here as well. All right, so here's an example of the new cock gun goop delivery method. Uh, what I've been doing is I just put a little bit over each hole, like so. This is the, the wet method, just enough to fill a hole. All right, and watch each hole has some goop. Like so. And every once in a while you wanna release this to get that pressure. Otherwise it'll sit there and continue to dispense. Once that's done, lift this guy up. Remember we're working with these top ones right here. And put in rivets. You'll see that the goop is poking through the hole ever so slightly, which is exactly what we want. We want a little bit of goop, you know, to come out. And this is the, the wet rivet technique. I think a lot of people uh, also add some goop from this side, but I found you don't need to, and you just end up using a lot of extra goop. And once I got all those in there, I then, instead of using rivet tape, I use painter's tape because it's cheaper and works just as well. 
so and make sure each rivet is set and of course I'm getting those <laughs> that's something to be said for rivet tape as you can see through it there we go so now I've got all of those down and make sure we're lined up over our back rivet so now we want to add more goop around the rivets this is how I've Make sure each one's sealed. Put a little on each side. And then once I've done that, the other side, same thing. Again, we're just making sure the rivets are fully surrounded by the horrible goopy mess. And so slightly, like shoe. And then some in the middle, just to just to make sure it sticks down good. Again, let's relieve the pressure. Wipe that off a little bit. Then we find number six, number six. Put that down and press it down into place. And then you do back riveting just like normal. And then once, you are done with your back riveting. Uh, make sure to clean off your tool because this goopy crap does not make for good, good clean tools. Once that's done, you go at it with the goop again and you just seal all the way around. And that's it. That is how you use the goop gun. And the goop gun is not bad, actually. Surprisingly. There you go. And then also over the top of each rivet. And that's it. Sort of like squeezing icing onto the worst stinky smelly cake ever. <laughs> but yeah. Wow. Holy shit. That is way easier than doing it by hand. There you go. Awesome. Now I'll do it a whole bunch more times. Okay, time for an after action review. If you did like I did, and you bought this quart sized can of tank sealant, which comes with a little accelerant uh, on top, um, versus buying this, uh, I would say throw it away. Holy crap. So this is infinitely better. Uh, I cannot begin to describe how much better of a product this is. First of all, it's the same chemicals inside, but just the application process is so much easier. It's basically exactly what that needs to be, but in caulk gun form. Uh, Price-wise, I think this was $17, and then you have to get the... I don't even know if this is a specialized cock gun or not, but it was $17 as well. I bought it. You only need one. Um, and there's still some in here. There's actually quite a bit in here. I did, uh, that was one of my first concerns is I was going to use this and I was like, oh, I don't know how much is in here because it only seems like it's, it's not a lot. But there's so little waste when you're using it that you can use all of it. Whereas with, with the stuff in the quart can, when I was mixing and making me, my own, half of it that I made was just garbage because I, I, I just couldn't use it because it was so difficult to use. It's cleaner, it's neater, it's easier to work with. It still stinks, <laughs> but uh, oh my gosh. And really, I didn't even need to use gloves, though you should use gloves, uh, until the very end when I was peeling off all the um, all the painter's tape, the tape rolled up and kept slapping me in the hands with, with the uh, goop on it, but nowhere near as messy as as the former way. Oh, this is so much better, y'all. Uh, do this, do this, do this. Don't buy the goop. Just, just buy it in this form. This is so much easier to work with. It's not that much more expensive. And ultimately, really, 
if you think about it, since this stuff has a kind of a limited shelf life, buying these as you need them makes more sense. So yeah, damn, that is a big difference. This, order this. That's it, guys. That's where I'm going to end this one. I did have a little bit more video of me actually using the Pro Seal coming out of the caulk gun applicator. Uh, for whatever reason, I lost some of that video. I, I copied it off of the card onto the computer, and now I can't find it. So I might have accidentally deleted it. Eh, sorry. Uh, anyways, get the caulk gun Pro Seal. Don't don't think about getting anything else, honestly, unless you have a way of taking the quart uh, stuff, mixing it all up, putting it into your own cock gun and then using it. Remember, you got to use it right when you mix it. It is kind of like a, it's not vulcanizing, there's another word for it, but it's a chemical compound that like an epoxy wants the two, two, two halves meet. It is, the curing process has begun, so you have a very limited amount of time to use it. Uh, I thought that I was not going to be able to use or I'm not gonna, oh, sorry, I thought I wasn't gonna have enough time rather to use the stuff coming out of the caulk gun, but it turned out I had ample time. I, you know, it took me about two hours to do that work and it was still, uh, still doing great. So, and I had lots left over. Like I said, super, super easy to use. Um, it seems like there's not a lot in there, but there's actually a lot. Uh, and it, it's, it, because it's so easy to apply and it's so clean to apply, you're not wasting. Oh, so much better. So anyways, guys, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate everybody. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you'd hit that little like button over there, I'd really appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up. If you want to get notifications, you got to hit the bell and then select when you want to be notified. I don't know why that's a thing. And if you really like what I'm doing on this channel, jump over to my Patreon page where you, for as low as a dollar a month, you guys can buy me a cup of coffee just to let me know that you appreciate what I'm doing on here. Thank you so very much. Again, oh, I don't hate the, the, the Pro Seal as much. Still hate it, but not as much. See you next time.